All right, so what is up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create an expandable fab button. So essentially, if you have a recycler view or a list view, you can go down and you'll have this very nice animation for the fab button. So if we go up and down, you'll notice that it expands and it becomes smaller again. And you can actually click on it whenever you feel like, and it will just act as a normal floating action button. So that's what we're gonna be learning how to make in this tutorial. And the first thing you want to do is go ahead and create a new Android Studio project with an empty activity. And we're gonna actually be using a dependency for this. So go to your Gradle scripts and open the build.gradle file. And the first thing we want to do inside here is go under Kotlin options and add the build features for view binding. Then we should go to our dependency section. So we're gonna be using this dependency by imtuan and it's just gonna be a floating action button expandable dependency. So I'm gonna leave the link in the description so you can go there and you should be able to find it down here where it says setup. So we're gonna copy the implementation and we're gonna paste it right below. Then we also have to go to our other build.gradle file because we have to add to our all project section, the JIT center or whatever it's called, the JIT pack from Maven and we're just gonna paste it under J Center. Then we can go ahead and click on Sync Now. And after having done that, we can actually close this Gradle scripts, open our REST folder, open the Drawable folder, right click on it, go to New, Vector Asset, and we're gonna look for a messaging icon. So just type in Message and click on Message. And we're gonna rename this to IC underscore, I guess we'll just name it Message, and we'll change the color to white click on next and click on finish. Then we can go ahead and close the drawable file and go to our layout. And we'll click on activity and the school main.xml, go to the split view and change the constraint layout to a relative layout. We're also gonna change the background and make it slightly gray. So just start with black and then go there and change it to some sort of light gray, such as that one. We should also remove this text view because we will not be using it. And the first thing we want to add is a recycler view, which will match the parent on both. But we're gonna give it a margin of 4 dp. And we also have to give it an ID of RV underscore recycler, which will be the ID we will use for this recycler view. Then we can go ahead and close it. The next thing we want to add is this expandable floating action button. So we'll go ahead and type in floating action button expandable, this one over here. And we want it to wrap the content for both. We'll give it an ID of fab. Then we want to align it to the parent end and set that to true and also align it to the parent bottom and send it to true. It will have a margin of 20 dp. Then we should give it a content or a fab content of start a new chat and we'll give it a background color of some sort of blue. So we'll just do that and select on this blue. And finally, we just have to specify an icon, which is going to be the one we created in our drawable folder. So just type in our drawable and find your IC message or whatever icon you want. And we have to give it a duration. And I'm just gonna put 200 here. So it will be very nice and smooth. And then we can close that. And this is going to take care of our main activity page. But of course we have to go ahead and create a recycler view and a recycler view item. But let's go ahead to our layout and create a new layout resource file, which will be called RV underscore item and click on okay. Then we'll go to the split view and we will change this to a relative layout. The first thing I'm gonna add inside here is a card view, which will match the parents and wrap the content for the height. And actually, before I forget, go back to your relative layout and set the height to wrap content. And we should also give it a layout margin of 2 dp and a corner radius of 2 dp. Then inside here, we should add a text view, which first will match the parent, and then we will set this one to 100 dp. We also have to give it an ID, which I will call TV underscore item underscore text and a margin of 60 dp. Then the dummy text is just gonna be called item text caller is gonna be at color black and the text size will be 20 SP. And finally, we want to set the gravity to center. And actually I meant to set this to 60 p and not 60. So I will just fix that right now and close this text view. And this will take care of the item view. Next, we have to go to our 
folder with the main activity and create a new Kotlin file, which we will call Recycler Adapter. And this Recycler Adapter is gonna take one parameter, which is gonna be a private var text. And that's going to be a type of list, which is of type string. Then we have to extend recycler view dot adapter, which is gonna take the recycler adapter dot view holder, which we will create immediately. And don't forget this pair of parentheses. Here we're gonna create an inner class, which we will call view holder. And it's going to take an item view of type view. Then we just have to import the view and we need to extend recycler view dot view holder with the item view inside. So inside here, we'll be able to take care of click events and that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna do this really fast. Val item title, which is gonna be of type text view. And that's going to equal item view dot find view by ID. And that's r dot ID dot TV underscore item dot text. Then we have to create an init block. And inside here, we'll type in item view dot set on click listener and we will write value position which is going to be of type int is going to equal the adapter position and then we just want to make a toast with the item view dot context as the context and we're just going to log the position as a toast message so every time you click on an item you'll be able to find the position just by finding the adapter position. Then we have to go and hover over the recycler adapter and implement the members, which are going to be this three. So select all of them and click on OK. So the first one we'll take care of is the view holder. So we'll type in value V is going to equal a layout inflator dot from, and it's gonna be the parent dot context dot inflate. And we're gonna to have to put an R dot layout dot RV item, add a parent and attach to root will be set to false. Then we want to return this view holder. So return view holder with this layout inflate inside. Then when we move on to onbind view holder, we're just going to call holder dot item title dot text. And that's going to equal the text at the position of whatever position it's at. And to return the item count, all we have to do is return the size of the list of text. And this will take care of our recycler view adapter. Next, we can go to our main activity. And the first thing we have to do inside here is create a binding variable. So late in it var binding. That's gonna be of type activity main binding. And we also have to create a private variable of text list, which will be passed into the recycler view. And that's gonna be a mutable list of string. Then right under super.onCreate, we can go ahead and assign a value to this binding variable, which is going to equal activity main binding dot inflate. And we have to pass in a layout inflator. Then all we have to do is set the content view to binding dot root. And to make sure it stays on light mode and not dark mode, we're going to type in app compat delegate dot set default night mode. And that's just going to take another app delegate dot mode night no. Then we have to create three methods. One's going to be called add to list one's going to be called setup recycler and one's going to be called setup fab button essentially so the first one we want to create is a function that adds to the list so private function add to list and we're just going to type in for i in 0 to 100 we're going to type in text list dot add and then we'll just type in sample text and interpolate and add the iterator. Then above that, we can go ahead and set up the recycler view. So private function set up recycler view, and it's gonna take the binding dot RV recycler dot layout manager. And that's gonna equal a linear layout manager, which takes an application context as the context. And right below we'll go binding dot RV recycler and set the adapter to the recycler adapter and pass in the text list as an argument. Now, all that's left to do is set up this fab button so it will react to the recycler view when we scroll up and down. So we'll type in private function setup fab and we're gonna type in value fab is going to equal binding dot fab and then we can type in fab dot set on click listener and when we click on it, of course, we need to pass in an application context and we can write new chat clicked. So that will take care of the click event. Then we can go ahead and type in binding.rvrecycler and add an on scroll listener. And this is going to take an object of type recycler view.onscrollListener. 
And then inside here, we have to override on scrolled and we can remove this part here. Then we're gonna write if dy is more than zero, we are going to collapse our fab button. Else, we want to expand our fab button. And that's gonna take care of all the logic we need to make this floating action button respond to our scrolls. And just to make sure everything worked, let's go ahead and click on run. Now let's go ahead and test out if it responds to our scroll events. And as you can see, if we scroll down, it, go it minimizes. And if we scroll up, it expands. And if we click on it, we'll get a toast message. If we click on a random item, we will get the index of that item. And uh, let's just go back to activity main and change this fab duration maybe to 400. So now you can see the animation down there is much smoother than before. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't, maybe you like when it's faster. But yeah, there's a lot of customization you can do with this, definitely be sure to go to the GitHub page where you can check out all of the commands such as duration, text size, typeface. There's a lot of attributes that you can give to this floating action button. But with that being said, that's actually all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. And yeah, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.